Think about it. A program where we discuss important issues, issues that impact our society and give it a spiritual spin to it. My name is Rick, and today I have the pleasure to introduce Ethan from Watchmen Media. How's it going, Ethan? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing all right. Well, today we'll be discussing cancel culture. I know that's something that you like find very interesting. As a matter of fact, you will probably uh, find yourself in opposition to it. Uh, what is cancel culture? So pretty much cancel culture is something that it hasn't really just come about. Um, I would like to think of it as censorship, but it's just a new name for censorship. Um, so pretty much in today's society, you know, if you go against, you know, if you go against the grain of what, you know, society at large thinks, you will pretty much be removed from all forms of social media. You'll be re removed from TV, you know, just being able to, um, you know, speak out being able to uh, speak out to, you know, a wider audience. Mm -hmm. So uh, once you get canceled, you can end up losing your influence, losing your job, losing everything. So um, another way I like to describe it is, you know, we live in a country where we have free speech, mm -hmm. but now since there's actual like cancel culture going on now, free speech can cost you everything wow wow interesting way of putting it matter of fact but i see what you're saying but a lot of people think that um speech has to be regulated yeah i know some people come sometimes they come up with this uh, idea that you can't yell fire in the crowded place right that there should be a punishment for that right and they see the idea of canceling someone who may be out of line with society with the most of society right. as a safety precaution right and what do you make of that okay so um i'll say like addressing the uh let's just say saying fire in a, you said like a crowded place or a movie theater. Mm -hmm. So um, I will, I would like to say like, that's like a call to action mm -hmm. where I do believe that a call to action should not really fall under freedom of speech. Mm -hmm. But what about, like, I know you say like, shouldn't call under freedom of speech. Right. But what about like, you know, certain people who feel like certain individual with such a megaphone, they ostracize certain segment of the uh, society. For example, I remember like there was a lady, I think J.K. Rowling was her name. Right. She wrote the books of Harry Potter. Right. And she had, uh, she wrote a tweet speaking about how transgenderism, how like, you know, a, a man cannot become a woman and, and vice versa. Right. But the transgender community, they found that offensive because they, they feel that a lot of violence towards the community come as a result of a big uh, views like that. So right. what do you say about that? I mean, because people are thinking that when you allow someone like that to speak, they are calling for action, but violence. Right. Well, I would like to disagree on that. So in a country where you have free speech, there shouldn't be a such thing as like what they like to call hate speech. Mm -hmm. There shouldn't be something that, uh, you know, that regulates people's ability to, let's just say, if they hate somebody mm -hmm. in a country where there's free speech, you should have every right to be able to offend people. Um, if you think about the gospel, the gospel will offend people that don't want to hear it. But I have something. So are you saying that every speech should be allowed? Yes. So even like somebody who is calling for revolution, for example, should that be allowed in, in a free society? Um, yes, I would actually like to say that as well. <laughs> <laughs> We don't want to say we call it for revolution here, but I, I see what you're saying. Though, but I do think, uh, even with the idea of free speech, there should be some limit. I actually agree that there should be some limits uh, to it because you don't want to call for somebody else's death. Right. That should be illegal. That, right. You know, like you can't call for the death of the president. Right. You will have the Secret Service at your door, like you know, the next right. day. Right. That's so, that's pretty much like that's a call to action. But uh, when when you say revolution, revolution in a sense could mean change. Yeah, it could be changed, but right. I was referring to like, you know, you cannot just say, you know what, let's overthrow the government. Okay, no. Yeah, I, I disagree with yeah, that, right? You know what I'm saying? So I do agree there should be a certain limit to free speech. Right. But in the way that you were mentioning the cancel culture, where they are attacking anybody who basically oppose the cultural norms. Right. Like whatever the latest uh, uh, trend is, if anybody else speak against that, they are opposing to that. And I think this is where we are like on a slippery slope. Right. To like a dangerous place where we don't want to be right and uh so the second question i have for you is what what have we seen this form of censorship before um all throughout history um i can name at least three or four people off the top of my head that uh dictators uh mao um kim jong-il mm -hmm. hitler stalin 
Mussolini, pretty much every form of totalitarian government that you know existed in the recent past, like within the last hundred years, uh, which could be a lifetime for you know for people that are still alive right now, mm -hmm. uh, where they censor anything that you know that pretty much goes against the, the you know the norms of society. Yeah. So you know once they censor that. Now there's only one voice that can be heard, yeah, and which can also lead to, in a sense, brainwashing. It's a, it's interesting you mentioned Mao because like Mao did that on a massive scale. Right. He even had the Cultural Revolution, where they were basically trying to like he was trying to rearrange the whole society to erase the past of China. Right. And we've seen certain aspect of uh, that uh, that kind of censorship or uh, cancel culture, where I think when they were having the Black Lives Matter protests. Where they were destroying a lot of statues that stand for white supremacy or whatever they call it, right. and basically trying to erase history. Now, I'm not saying we are in favor of white supremacy or anything like that, right. but I also do think that when you destroy certain things, it seems like that same kind of concept that Mao had, where he's trying to erase history because they say that whoever controls the past right. controls the future. Right. So it could be a slipper slope, uh, like with that type of uh, understanding also. Right. And speaking also, I think I was thinking about like. Uh, Stalin, or even Adolf Hitler, right. where he burned the books written by the Jews. Like he had a cancel culture of canceling Jewish writers, right. you know, Jewish intellectuals. Right. And a lot of them had to flee the, uh, the nation because of all that persecution. Right. You know, um, another thing I've noticed like this with today's society, and I was actually watching a video from at least like 40 or 50 years ago, mm -hmm. uh, where they were talking about how they were going to censor people. And if you notice, like uh, in, today, in today's society, you know, if you say something that, like, just to say it offends the gays, you're homophobic. Mm -hmm. If you say something that offends the, you know, the Jewish people, you're anti-Semitic. They throw these titles out to censor you, mm -hmm. you know, to cause outrage or to, you know, to pretty much make people afraid to speak out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because if nobody will speak, those that are in power control the society. Right. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a very common threat in totalitarian government because one of the first thing, if you notice, like when there is a, like a coup or, or whatsoever, like in the totalitarian system, right. the first thing the government try to take control of is, is, the, is the media. Right. Try to control the media, try to control dialogues, conversation. If you can uh, shut out dissent, they feel like you know you have more power, and also there's this idea that the pen is more powerful than the sword. Right. So one of the main people that are usually targeted in societies, like you know, uh, oppressive societies, are writers or people who expresses their ideas and who are not afraid to challenge the system. So we are seeing this thing happening, and one thing I find interesting in the way it's happening in the United States is not the government it's that the is shutting people. people down; it is the people. Right. And, and, and th that one is very interesting because a lot of times when people say, okay, all right, so-and-so is canceled, a lot of people who are defending the cancellation are quick to say, it's not the government that shut them down. Even when people say, okay, I have the right for free speech, they say, yes, the Constitution says you have the right for free speech. The government cannot prevent you from speaking. Right. But it's not the government that's preventing you from speaking. It's, it's social media. Right. And they're saying like social media, they are private companies. So they have a right to do whatever they whatever want to they do. Want, right. So it seems like in the U.S., the same totalitarian system is finding a way to come, but from the back it's, door. In a, in a sense, it's actually circumventing the law. Yes, yes. And that's why it becomes more uh, difficult uh, to fight. So we are seeing this thing going on like throughout society. Right. And I remember like there was a German um, uh, pastor who was saying, he had a saying that goes like this. He said, first they came for the communists. But I wasn't a communist, so I said nothing. Right. So then they came for the Catholics. I wasn't a Catholic. I said nothing. So then they came for the Jews. I wasn't a Jew. So I said nothing. Then they came for the whoever, for the gypsies, for different groups. So till, till eventually they came for me. And there was no nobody to speak. Right, right. You know, so today we may be celebrating to see, some people are celebrating to see Kanye get canceled. Right. Now, we're not saying we agree with what Kanye was saying, but like you were saying, in a society where there's free speech, people have a right to say what they want to say. Right. Uh, some people are celebrating when they see somebody else get canceled, right? Right. But eventually that system will turn to everyone. And by the time a lot of people realize what's happening, they will not be able to speak against the system, right? Right. So that brings us to the last uh, question for today. How do we see this in light of Bible prophecy? Like where are these things heading? So it's pretty much heading to, like what I like to think is, um, you know, when we read Revelation, 
you know, talks about eventually how, you know, the, the beast is going to speak as a dragon. So eventually, I feel like these things are going to end up leading to a law or a state of government where Christians will not be able to speak out. Mm -hmm. Because just like uh, if you see today, I'm going to bring it back to today. If you speak out against, uh, you know, fornication, homosexuality, things that Christians are against, abortion, mm -hmm. now they try to cancel you. So now eventually it's going to lead to a state where you cannot speak or you cannot tell somebody about Jesus Christ mm -hmm. because it's going to offend other people. Yeah. So like, uh, what do you think about that? Or you cannot tell somebody about the Jesus Christ of the Bible. Right. Because there is this idea of a universal Christ out there. Right. Like we all can come together, kumbaya, and be one, one world religion, one world order, and we all go into heaven. Right. While we know that the Christ of the Bible says that there is only one way to go. Right. And this, in some society, in some environment, it's controversial. Right. Something so plain in the scriptures that we know as Christian, there's, that's actually why we are Christian. Right. Because we believe there's one way. Right. And um, the fact that you even mentioned that, when we read in the Bible, we see that cancel culture was always in existence in the Bible. Right. The prophets were canceled. I'm actually glad you brought that up. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Right. It, it, even if you look at Peter, uh, when he was speaking, and the, they, they took him to the Sanhedrin, they were saying that, we don't want you to speak anymore in the name of Jesus. Right. He said, okay, you guys figure it out. Should I obey God or, or men? Right. So you know what, like, so in a sense, kind of like what I said before, cancel culture is not new. It's just a new name for something that has always existed. Yes, sir. Right. Yes, sir. And as Christians, we got to ask ourselves the same question. Should we obey God or men? Should I be afraid of being canceled and as a result, I don't spread the gospel? No. Right. Forbid. You know, as a Christian, God has put us on this earth to be a witness right so i have a question for you though so um as christians should we always speak out when we see evil as christians you always have to do everything you do with in, in, in accord with god right like you know there's a time to speak and a time to hold to hold speech right you know you have to go about with wisdom right but the main thing is as christians we should not be afraid of cancel culture. Right. Because cancel culture is the mark of tyranny. Right. It's the spirit of the dragon. Right. The spirit of Satan. Right. It is Satan trying to prevent the gospel from spreading. So now, like, Satan is very wise. What he does, he starts from very far. He starts from, like, people that are, like, you know, you would say worldly or even saying, like, racist thing or whatever. People are saying, like, you no, know, really, not necessarily good things. Right. So they cancel these people to make, to make it seem like cancel culture is doing a good work. But Satan's true target are the people of God. And this thing will be creeping slowly, slowly towards the people of God. Right. It's like a, a, an onion that you just peel each layer off. Uh, I'm actually glad you brought that up as well, too. Because like, if you look at just like the way media is, mm -hmm. uh, you know, let's say maybe, let's just say 80 to 100 years ago. You know, the amount of things that we see on TV, you see... You know, uh, let's just say half naked people, mm -hmm. you know, like things like that, that would have been a shock to the people, like to our grandparents. Mm -hmm. And now, uh, you know, it started becoming normal to see, you know, let's just show more skin. Mm -hmm. You know what? Let's uh, let's just throw a gay character in there. Mm -hmm. And now it just, you know, it just pretty much like evolved into what it is now mm -hmm. where, um, you know, where now America, you know, was a Protestant country. But now we've been bombarded with so much propaganda, so much, you know, uh, things in the media that now America is pretty much an atheist country or half I think, secular, basically a secular country. Yeah. Right. And you see, like you brought that point up. And I think one of the reasons why these immoralities were, were like progressed so rapidly, because a lot of Christians, they got tired of speaking the truth. Right. And those who are, who are spreading the error, the evil, they were not tired. They were, they were like, you no, know, they were full of zeal right. in spreading the immorality. Just like you see right now, the gay movement, the transgender movement, these people are t tireless right. in, in working to push forward falsehood and in working to shut down whoever opposed them. Right. So as Christians, we have to be as vigilant, even more vigilant. More vigilant. You know, there is a, there is a verse in the Bible, uh, the parable of the wood and the tears, that says that while men slept, while men slept, the enemy came and sowed the tears. Right? right and we are seeing the same thing today while many people are sleeping the enemy is tightening the noose around the neck of free speech and it is our call 
God is calling us that we ought to obey God. No matter what the state says, no matter what social media says, no matter what the mob says, we have to stand for free speech. Uh, we have to stand for the gospel because the gospel is free speech. Right. Because the gospel liberates people from the bondage of sin, from the slavery of addiction, from the slavery of falsehood. So as Christians, we have to stand for the truth no matter what. Brother Ethan, I'm happy to have you here. Oh man, it was, it was, a, it was, it was a, a pleasure to be here. Yes, uh, if you want to know more about uh, Brother Ethan, you can check out his uh, YouTube channel. It is Watchmen Media. Think about it. Once again, this is Rick, and we are out.